guys, it's Danny. Today we're gonna be working with my big boy, the Ingracum Vici. And when I say big, I mean very big. Very, very big. He is the biggest orchid in my collection. If you remember, I received this orchid about two years ago from Habib, one of my viewers, and oh my goodness, he's been so wonderful ever since. He's grown so nice. Never bloomed, but I think that was my doing and my mistake because this is a highlight orchid and I could never give him the proper light since he's so big and I cannot really find a place in my greenhouse. I used to have him on one shelf and the shelf bent, yes, the wood bent, so no more shelves for you, he's sitting on the floor. And also, as you can see, in my first year of having it, I managed to sunburn it. Currently, he is residing outside. Yes, I made a summer residence for my orchids, but on the eastern side. So he does receive morning sunshine, but no noon sun. And I hope that will be enough for him. Otherwise, though, he is fantastic. He has super green, nice, luscious leaves, big leaves, and a big root system which cannot cope with this container anymore. There is a problem with this clay pot. First of all, it dries in a second, pretty much. For one, the orchid sucks up all the water, it is a big orchid, and second, it is a clay pot and doesn't help with water retention at all. Furthermore, he is outside now, so pretty much I need to water him every day. And although I just soaked him, I do believe it's already starting to dry. So that's the first major problem with the circuit. But the second one is the pot itself, in the sense that it started to crack. I have a crack here, which you can clearly see, but I have a bigger one in the back right there. So as the roots grow, the pot cracks more and more, and one day I'm afraid I'm going to find it split open. Now, this has been happening for a while, but the progress is very, very slow, uh, but I do need to do something about it. And I do want to pot this orchid in semi-hydroponics. My ingracums do wonderful in semi-hydroponics here in my climate. Furthermore, this orchid will be outside. Yes, you heard me correctly, outside yet again, but not on that side. I learned more about this climate and right now I am experimenting with a summer residence for my orchids outside on the terrace but in the eastern part of my terrace. So pretty much they will have sun in the morning and late afternoon and I think it's just something I need to experiment with my hot growers. The main resource I have here is sun, might as well use it. So I have a big pot for this orchid prepared. I managed to find in my garden centers and flower shops plastic pots that don't already have holes at the bottom. So I can make my holes on the side for the reservoir and I can use them for semi-hydroponics. Now the pot that I use is actually purchased from a flower shop. It appears to be made in Greece if that helps you out, but I really cannot tell you where you can find these types of pots which don't have uh, drainage holes. I just find them in flower shops around here. So do check your local flower shop or garden center. However though, if you need a big pot, go for IKEA trash cans. They're really inexpensive for what they are and they actually look good. They come in two colors, black and white, and I have quite a lot of white ones on the terrace. So they're really, really good for big orchids, stuff like cymbidiums perhaps. It's a very cheap alternative for a pot without drainage holes. And also, if you want a smaller one, let's say maybe for a Phalaenopsis, a complex hybrid, again, IKEA, there is that pot which is creamy white, I forgot the name of it, you're gonna have pictures on the screen. I have a few of them as well. They work great for Phalaenopsis or Cattleyas or things that are a little bit bigger and they don't have drainage holes, so you can put side holes and create your very own semi-hydroponic pots, which are opaque, they're white, and yeah, hope this helps you out. Okay, so first I will go about removing him from the pot uh, like I would a normal orchid. We'll see if that works. And because I need to concentrate and not be impaired by the wire of my microphone, which I need to change, I shall leave you in the company of music. All right, this is not happening, you guys. I'm gonna go on the terrace and I will need to break the pot. Oh my goodness, I don't even know if I have a hammer. I should have a hammer somewhere.
Okay, this was actually pretty easy. I thought this reporting would be thrilling and exciting, but no. Now, the next part is to remove, but not stress too much over it, this ramus, because I'm going to be placing him in semi-hydroponics. I don't want too much ceramus blocking those air gaps. But again, this is boring because ceramus just falls from the roots. So I guess my monster repots have suddenly become boring and pretty usual due to the inorganic medium that I have. Alrighty, so I'm going to remove as much of these ceramics as possible. If I have any dead roots, I'm going to cut them away. I will not use hydrogen peroxide or anything of the sorts because I know this orchid, I know it doesn't have pests, no point in actually wasting product on it. There's no rotting, nothing going on with the root system. I did not have decomposing medium around the roots and so on and so forth. So I'm just going to repot him in a bigger pot and I'll come back when I'm done. I have chosen a 25 centimeter pot for my orchid. Yes, it's big, but the orchid is huge as well. And also you might notice that the aerial roots which grew outside of the pot, I'm leaving them outside. There is a chance these roots will not adapt to the high moisture environment of semi-hydroponics, but that's okay. Inside the pot, we have a whole bunch of roots which will do their job are adapted to higher moisture, LECA, inorganic medium. All I have to do now is place LECA around the root ball. Before I do that, I want to show you a little device that I purchased. One of those cans or scoops that you use to get soil. Well, I found a better use for it. I made some holes on the bottom, as you can see, even though it already had some holes, they weren't big enough. So with my soldering iron, I placed some holes on the bottom. And what I do is I scoop a leka, and then I place the scoop under the faucet, and I rinse my leka very, very well. And what do you know, it actually works really great. It's super fast. I don't need to use those strainers that I used to have, if you remember them. It works a lot, lot better. Mind you, I don't actually soak my leka or treat it in any way. Not that I advise you to do the same, but I did find a brand of leka that really doesn't give me any troubles. But I guess the scoop can be used with prepared leka as well. If you have it in a bucket of water, the leka, you can scoop it out and let the water just flow from the bottom and then use it to put leka around the orchid. So I hope this is inspiring for you if you're working with leka. It's really, really great. Alrighty, so my orchid is now potted and you might notice my voice is a little muffled. Well, I forgot to tell you, whenever I rinse leka and clay, I use one of these. This is a uh, breathing mask. It's very cheap. You find it in the pharmacy and also at hardware stores, home improvement stores. It's everywhere. Whenever you rinse leka and ceramics, as you might have seen on the footage, there is a lot of dust dispensed in the air. That dust is really not healthy and you should not breathe it in. So try to make sure that you're working in a well ventilated room or outside and also wear one of these. I believe it is important for us to maintain this hobby as safe as possible. So you know me, I wear gloves all the time because I don't like to have splinters, micro scratches and stuff of the sorts on my hands. And I don't suggest you have either. Plus it's really not elegant to have dirt under your fingernails, right? And also, please, when you're working with dusty clay, use one of these. Depending on the brand, Leka will have some dust as well, but it will not crumble as much as ceramics. Ceramics, every time you work with it, it will always create dust. It's one of the things that I really hate about it and I just don't want to deal with anymore. <laughs> Therefore, only Leka for me. In time, Leka does not create so much dust, if at all. But initially, it does have some dust and it just goes into the air when you wash it. Alrighty, so next I'm going to place my orchid on my terrace and I will water it there because it's very heavy at this point. I'll use tap water because I want to flush the pot yet again. There might be some dust there collected from the leka, so I want to give it a good, good flush. And starting from next time, I will use my regular watering regime. Now on the terrace, things might dry out a little bit faster, yes, but because of my reservoir, they will actually not dry out all that fast. Yay, semi-hydro. I can always supplement with tap water. Really, it's no big deal. I did it last year as well. And all of these orchids are strong, robust orchids. I didn't put any Miltoniopsis on the terrace or anything of the sorts. It's only cattleyas and hot growers. So tap water will be okay for them if I use it from time to time, but I think I can do with my regular schedule. It is hot, everybody dries out fast, so I'll just have to water the terrace ones as well. 
and I think this kind of lasted overall about five minutes. It lasted longer for me because I had to move the camera around and talk to you guys and, and then talk for five minutes and discover that my camera wasn't working. So yeah, it pretty much took five minutes. I love inorganic and clay from this point of view. It's just, oh, repotting is so easy if you ever need to repot or up pot. So alrighty guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me this Sunday. Quick, easy video and I think we'll have more repottings on the way. I feel like I'm full of energy right now. So I do want to make some repottings. Let me know if you'd like to see them filmed. So you know the drill. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. Subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos, repottings, Q&As and all of that fun stuff. And if you like YouTube to remind you, whenever I post a new video, make sure that all notifications are on for my channel and hopefully YouTube will notify you. And with that said, I'll see you all next time. Bye!